Hey everybody, it's Clayton coming back with a new video. And I wanted to kind of address today in this video specifically the changes in when finance is about to push through on April 15th. Um, how the market has been doing this week. Today is Friday the 27th. And uh, the bill that Trump just signed into law about an hour, hour and a half ago. Uh, mainly I want to focus though, or to start I want to focus on my portfolio. I haven't had any new purchases since the last time we spoke. Um, my dividends are still sitting at 11.50 or 11.95. And I want to address this. I'm pretty sure that almost all of my stocks or a majority of them are about to suspend or cut their dividends. That doesn't surprise me with the way the markets are going right now. And it shouldn't really freak any of you out currently if you're dividend investors or just investors as a whole. Um, I expect all of these companies to get back to paying dividends in the short future. And if they cut them, to raise them back up once the market turns itself around. Because obviously for 99% of these that I'm holding, um, this was due to something that was outside of their control. And I think it'll turn around. Carnival's one that I'm still not sure about. They may take a while to get back because it's going to have to earn the trust back of everyone to be in confined quarters like that. But we'll see with Carnival. The rest of them, I think, will be perfectly fine. That's if they cut them at all or suspend them. But I won't be shocked if I see that throughout my uh, portfolio. But the first thing I want to touch on was the changes coming in M1 Finance, like I said earlier in the video, on April 15th. So as you can see, uh, I will post this article in the description below if you want to read through the whole thing. But what they're doing on April 15th is they are raising the minimum investment to a dollar for a stock. Before you could kind of invest whatever you wanted when it came, there was no minimum dollar amount. I guess a penny is the minimum, but you could invest like 30 cents here, 60 cents here, 40 cents here, and your portfolio would divide up whatever your investment was throughout to, to allocate and match the percentages that you have in your portfolio. They're changing that to the minimum deposit or the minimum uh, distribution where to getting a stock will be a dollar. Um, that doesn't really affect me, but I'll show you in this article where they address that it seems like a majority of their purchases were in this, or not a majority, but enough were. And then also they're changing the auto invest feature from $10 to $25. So this amount up in the top right corner where it says cash, before when it was getting to $10, it would auto invest into your account, into your stocks that you currently hold, to obviously the allocations depending on what the percentages are, but now it's not gonna do that until it hits $25. A little bit of an annoyance, a little, I guess you can call it unfortunate, however you want to look at it. Um, but they go into detail as to why they do this, and they say it's to reduce costs for both the user and themselves. Like I said, I, I recommend reading this article. It's not very long. It's about three pages, if at most. But they talk about reducing the cost for you because it's easier for your tax filings, and you don't have hundreds and sometimes thousands of uh, trades that have to be documented and all of that. But then also they talk about how... Right here, specifically, it says reduce the cost for us, enabling us to put more resources back into, an, the, into improving the product and the experience for you. And they say sub $1 trades make up 25% of the total trade volume, which only accounts for 0.05% of all dollars transacted. So a fourth of their trades are under a dollar. So on paper, it seems like they're losing a lot of 25% of what is done on their website is changing. But I think the reason this is being done realistically is if you've paid attention to the markets and the news, you've seen M1 hasn't really experienced it. They've kind of had delayed um, purchasing. So usually the purchase window between like 10 and 11. It was carrying its way out to like 11, 30, 12, and sometimes like one o'clock because of how busy it was during this whole market fluctuation. But we saw other services like Robinhood essentially just completely freeze up and fail. Um, and I think for M1, the reason they're doing this, this is just an assumption, is it will eliminate some of the capacity. Uh, as you can see here, it's the greater, better platform. The less than $1 can put in a necessary strain on the system with such a low percent of transaction dollars. And to me, when I read that, that says that a lot of the slowdown that was going on during when the markets were falling or raising the last few weeks um, was because so many purchases were coming in that were for under a dollar. Now, again, they haven't released any evidence to show that, but to me, that's what that statement shows. And maybe by doing this, it'll ease up some of the uh, strain on the servers and make it where trading will be smoother. We'll see. Um, but that's just my opinion as to why I think they're doing it. They're saying it's to save money both ends. That's probably part of it as well. Um, but I think it's also has to do with so the site can run smoothly and not slow down as it was. So that's the change. For me, it's unfortunate because if I feel like it puts a cap on people that are able to invest. I know it sounds weird to just say, ooh, $1, that's not putting a cap, or $25. But there are some people that don't have a lot of money to invest. I, myself, don't have a lot of money. 
I know to some people what I've invested is a lot of money. And then some people, what I've invested is literally a, a one week deposit for them or even <laughs> a quarter of what they deposit or each week to put into the market. So everybody's amount of money differs. But putting a cap of $1, I think, just kind of shrinks their um, user base. Maybe by a little bit, but as you see when they said, 25% of their total trades accounted for some $1 trades. So obviously they've got users in their market, and I know obviously this is auto-investing, so there's people that don't have that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what it does with the website, and I'm just curious to see how it goes, because I hope it doesn't alienate users that were using this that don't have a lot in their uh, balance currently. Now with the Dow, on Monday, as we talked about, we were at 19000 and we finished the week at 21,636 because because as of yesterday, it went up, it had gone up 17% since Monday. Sorry, let me go back there. Yeah, about 17% since Monday. Fell again today, um, about 900 points. Still sitting at a 13% gain, which is great growth. Um, unfortunately, we don't really know what's going on with the markets now. No one can really predict it. And and the weird thing was that there's a jobless claim uh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday that hit that showed 3.3 million people um, are jobless currently or have filed basically first time applications for unemployment and i think the reason the market didn't really get hit by that because you'll see yesterday when this news broke that it where's the starting of thursday we started off thursday right here at 21 we finished up almost 1400 points the market usually predicts what not predicts that's not the right word but is slated to absorb this and everybody knew this was coming down the pike they just didn't know how much or how large the number would be so that's why i think the market rose with this because people were expecting it some people may have thought this was lower than what they expected i didn't get to really see the average beforehand or i would kind of weigh in on that um, but i think that in my opinion it was people were surprised by it being lower which to me 3.3 million is astronomical and it isn't as you can see from this chart it has never ever been that high in the history of the unemployment um, when it comes to filing for unemployment so we'll see um i'm curious to see how the market does next week and obviously it finished a week off going down almost a thousand points on the four over four percent but again we'll see what happens now the other thing i really want to focus on this video and i've talked about this now for i think two or three videos was the financial package that was being put together that wound up being $2 trillion that got passed today. President Trump just signed it about an hour and a half ago, maybe an hour ago. Um, and I found a video that addresses kind of what it is and what you can expect. It is going to be $12,000 per person, um, per adult, plus $500 up to a certain cap when it comes to how much money you've made. And after, and I'll go over that after this video plays. But I want to let this video play and kind of explain exactly what was in the plan and what got passed. So let me let this play. The White House and the Senate have agreed to a roughly $2 trillion rescue package, the largest in American history. The plan would mean direct cash payments of $1,200 for many individuals and $3,000 for most families. A vote in the Senate is expected today. And as Nancy Cordes explains, it's expected to pass with overwhelming support. The Senate has reached a bipartisan agreement on a historic relief package for this pandemic. It was the early morning announcement the entire economy had been waiting for. To all Americans, I say, help is on the way. Big help and quick help. The massive bill is designed to bring relief to workers and businesses, hospitals and state governments, and those who have already lost their jobs, boosting unemployment insurance by $600 a week through July. Crazy. Before the video continues, yeah, this was part of the plan, and again, they're going to keep explaining it, but it was another $600 put towards the unemployment, and I had seen people talking about this yesterday or two days ago when they were discussing this bill, um, that they were talking about the $600 was a little overboard because it, no incentive for people to go back to work because it's essentially what they were making from unemployment already plus another $600, um, so they, a lot of people are going to make more money with this than they would working a minimum wage job. It is only for four months, but we'll see. It's obviously the purpose of this is to stimulate the economy. Will it work? Nobody really knows. This is kind of a, a hope and a prayer. Um, we'll see. Uh, I know with the money I have, it's not something that, luckily, I'm in a situation where I don't need to use that money directly into my, to pay off my bills currently. 
I've got a little bit of an emergency fund put aside, which I've been talking about for weeks with you guys. Um, and hopefully you're in the same situation. If not, just save that money and use it. But let me let the video continue. Easy, but we'll be fine. Yeah. That money will help the 40 restaurant workers that Lisa Spooner and Kevin Clark, restaurant tours in Atlanta, were forced to lay off last week. We're in a great country. There's money. We'll just go further in debt. I mean, people need help, and money is the answer. To help other small businesses keep their workers on, the bill contains nearly $400 billion in grants, plus another $500 billion in loans for major industries like the airlines. There's also... Now, I want to go... I'm going to come back to this video in a minute. But with the loans to airlines, let's go back here and talk about it. So that $500 billion loan program that was just discussed, as you see... The Treasury provides $5 billion, $500 billion in loan guarantees and investments, but there is a stipulation, and this is where we talked about kind of in our last video um, as a dividend investor, that kind of becomes, I wouldn't call it problematic, just something you to look out for. So with this bill, we see 25, or $25 billion is going for passenger air carriers, $4 billion for cargo air carriers, $17 billion for businesses that work in the security, and the $454 billion given to a wide latitude of to provide loans to businesses, states, and municipalities so the measure includes and here's what i want to talk about restrictions on businesses who receive the loans those businesses may not issue dividends for up to a year after a loan is no longer outstanding and must retain 90 percent of their employment staff as of march 24th through september 30th so obviously that 90 percent is a good thing because it makes sure people can't just fire their staff um but aside from that one thing that really stands out to me as a dividend investor is anybody that takes this bailout whatever you want to call it handout loan they are they cannot pay a dividend after a year after they've paid back their loan so depending on how much they take out let's just use uh, delta for example let's say delta takes part of this loan which i'm assuming they will and they've already suspended their dividends but let's just say they take part of this loan and so that until it's paid off after they still can't pay dividends and then for an additional year no dividends can be paid to any of their stockholders so this is something that actually may become more useful for anyone that's starting to invest or investing now is to look at stocks. If you only want to focus on dividend stocks, see who took these bailouts and see who were provided these loans because you already see by the law that was passed, they can no longer distribute dividends for up to a year or until a year after the loans are paid off, which again, that may take some time. No one really knows the length of time it's going to take. Let's go back to the video. So more than $130 billion for the nation's health care providers. There is much more money for our hospitals, for our nurses and physicians, for our nursing homes, for our community health centers to do the job they need to do. And $1,200 for most individuals. We're gonna pass this legislation later today. CBS News Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes joins us now from Capitol Hill. And Nancy, Democratic senators blocked the bill crafted by Republicans twice earlier this week. So what do we know about the changes that were agreed on in the final negotiations between the two parties? Well, there were lots of agreements, large and small, that ended up leading to this breakthrough in the middle of the night. The biggest uh, agreement has to do with that $500 billion pot of money that will be used to make loans to big industries that have been affected by this crisis. We're talking about the airlines, the hotel industry. Um, when they get those loans, the Treasury Department will now have to disclose who's getting the money and how they are using it within a set period of time. That is a big change. Democrats wanted more transparency uh, about how this money was being used and who it was being used by. Uh, a lot of them, frankly, still have PTSD from 10 years ago when they passed, passed a similar piece of legislation called TARP during the recession. There were not that many strings attached for these big businesses, and many Democrats felt that uh, it led to a lot of uh, waste excess and, um, and and poor behavior by these companies. They want to prevent that from happening again. So that is an agreement that was hammered out by the Treasury Secretary and Democrats. But uh, these last minute talks also boosted the amount of money for hospitals, uh, which as we know, so badly needed right now, and for state and local governments. You know, I don't think people have really uh, realized this, that it's state and local governments that um, run so much of uh, the operation 
operations that are in such high demand right now. Uh, in many cases, they oversee the hospitals, they obviously oversee the schools, and they've been so hard hit because they rely on sales taxes for revenue, and if people aren't shopping at local businesses, well, guess what? They're not paying that much in sales tax. So there's now a huge pot of money for state and local governments in this bill as well. So yeah, with that video, you kind of see what got passed through. There's a bunch of things I went through, obviously, to help the economy. Um, but for the main ones I wanted to focus on because of my channel was, as I talked about, the $1,200 and the $2,400 if you're married. It's a gross income for individuals of $75,000. It's $150 combined for, and then head of household is $99. If you make more than that, every $100 you made more than $75,000 individually, five dollars will be coming off your check until you hit ninety nine thousand dollars then it becomes you don't get anything um and the same goes for when you're looking at the combined so yeah i just wanted to kind of touch on those two things i guess three things when it came to the market the change from m1 we'll see how big it actually is and overall the bill that was just passed uh and signed in office about an hour ago so yeah that's the gist of this video and i want to thank everybody for watching Thank you everybody again for subscribing. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe and drop a like on this video to reach more people, help the analytics out. I greatly appreciate it. We're almost up to 100 subscribers. That blows my mind. I say this every video. Um, but for anyone out there that's still watching, if you have any questions, as I always say at the end of all my videos, please send me an email at claytonscash89, C-L-A-Y-T-O-N-S-C-A-S-H 89 at gmail.com. I will gladly answer anything, and if you want to be on the show, let me know in the email, and I'll gladly address your question on the show. Or if I feel it's something that is prevalent for other people, obviously I'll block your name and I'll post it on and answer that question uh, publicly, if you're okay with that. I'll check with you first before I do. Um, but for everybody else, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe out there. Um, please follow whatever guidelines have been put in place for your location, and just have a good weekend. I look forward to talking to you guys next time.